Hello and welcome to Lightroom for Landscape Part 6. I'm here with Joe Cornish and we'll be looking at colour adjustments in particular the hue, saturation and lightness control but also covering the whole of colour adjustments for images. And we're starting with a picture of yours, if you can tell us a little bit about this, Joe. Will do. Uh, yes, this is near Crackington Haven in North Cornwall and was made quite recently with uh, Out With A Friend. Uh, and the uh, there were a, a couple of interesting problems that had to be solved. Uh, I did have to filter this one, so if you can probably tell that too much, I think looking, you can see there's a little bit of uh, of a grad at the top yeah. uh, and because that grad needed to be approximately well sort of if you look at where the cursor is going now you can see roughly where the line was um, that was one thing that was fine but I didn't want too much effect on these very very dark hawthorns and gorse here uh, but I did want to damp I did need to damp down the grass and I also wanted to extend the exposure time slightly by using a three-stop filter. Okay. So it's three filters. One of them is actually handheld at the front. So I was using a tripod uh, at a different angle. Is, so this, the, is this because you wanted the different angle? You yes. Just had to so effectively, there's, a, there's another grad coming up from the bottom like that. Yeah. Uh, to darken down the grasses, which are a lot brighter than the hedge here, for example. So there's a kind of wedge in the middle that was unaffected by uh, the graduated filters. Anyway, there's a few little mitigation things that need to be done uh, and I think it might be good just to sort them out directly. So I'm going to take the radial filter, uh, if we think back to what we did before, a uh, bit of shadow recovery. Uh, we're just going to improve the shadows in this corner because they are a bit dominant. And I'm just going to brush in that effect in here a little bit as well, like that. And that should do the trick. Now, uh, the main problem, or a problem that often comes up with uh, raw files, uh, at least in their basic state, uh, we can see that, by the way, that we have the Adobe standard profile applied, it's usually fairly good, is they're a bit flat. They look a bit flat in, in terms of color. Uh, so let's go to uh, our basic module and see what the white balance is. So it's showing as shot and as shot must have been auto white balance, I yes. think. Yes, it's 7200 Kelvin, so it's yeah, quite exactly. warm. And it looks, to me, it looks brown. The yes. whole picture just looks dead. Uh, and so there's a, there's a couple of different approaches you can do. You can either start straight away by, uh, by fine tuning using uh, the temperature and tint controls. However, I personally have another way that I think I'd like to just explore uh, first. And rather bizarrely, that involves increasing the saturation. Wow, that's horrible. That's yes. horrible. <laughs> However, what it does do is it shows you immediately how far out, how, f how unbalanced. You can the see the greeny browniness of everything very clearly. You yeah. can, you can. And the next thing I'm going to do, another shortcut of sorts, is to just hit auto. And that immediately, immediately takes the colour almost back into an acceptable realm. So while it's still far too saturated, see how the balance has been restored. It's taken the temperature down from 75 or 7200 to 5400, and it's increased the tint. To, towards magenta, so it's shifted the tint towards magenta. Uh, not that much, but a little. And in fact, we can see that there are now casts of magenta and green in the grasses. Yes. Uh, and the sky looks rather cold. Uh, but overall, the overall balance, as it happens, looks quite good. So let's see what happens if we double click on saturation. That's interesting, isn't it? Yes. So what it's done is it's taken all the colours back to a standard setting and it looks completely desaturated. Yes. But, but in the meantime, uh, it has actually balanced the colour. Now, there's 
this is a really good starting point now, a much better starting point, I think, than the original. So we could just use saturation globally, which is where we were before to some extent, so taking up, 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 up. But I'd rather not do that. And the reason for that is that it's all a bit arbitrary. So it's just increasing all of the colours across the board. And one thing that is very noticeable when you do that is that the greens start to zinc very intense uh, a bit too quickly. We're very familiar with what greens should look like. We certainly are. Uh, I think, I guess, that's an evolutionary bio biology uh, issue. Uh, and certainly living in the UK, we're very used to what greens look like. Yes. We get practice at looking at them almost all the time, uh, especially if you live out in the country uh, and in the north of the country. So rather than use uh, the, uh, the saturation alone, we're going to choose the hue saturation luminance field. And for anyone who's not familiar with that, this is composed primarily of, well, if we click on HSL just to confirm what appears when we do that, hue here, saturation here, and luminance here. And each of these allows us a subtle and very definite control on individual colour areas or colour channels. And a real key to controlling this particular uh, area is the colour picker here. Now just to be clear about this, when we, we select the colour picker and take it over the image, it has a little crosshair top left and it's the pixels below that crosshair yeah. that are affected. And this, ident this is identifying which channels it's going to adjust. Correct. So if you look on the right hand side, you can actually see the channels being highlighted. As we do that. As we it, move it around. interesting, yeah. So we go up to blues there. Um, I think also just want to make the point that if we want to stop using that, we have to click on it again. So it's a toggle switch. Good. All right. Well, because we're not Oh, I'm not too bothered about the luminance or hue values at this stage. I'm just really mainly interested in saturation. And the key colours, I think, well, the key colour is the grass, the colour of the grasses. And I would like to restore some of that because that looks really washed out. Uh, so I'm going to take, and, oh, by the way, I think, sorry about this, I'll just click on that again. You can go up to 100% if you like. and if you want to be very precise about what you're choosing uh, and let's say you wanted to just target the yellows very individually if we put the cursor there and the crosshair then click and drag it disappears as you click by the way and as you can see it's moved the yellows um, let's let's sort of keep it below 50 I'm going to click on it and again restore normal viewing and we can see now that what's come up, the yellows and the oranges have come up predominantly. It has affected the greens because there is such a big component of yellow in green. Yes. So there's nothing very much we can do about that. Um, but it's emphasised, I suppose, the, uh, the warmer part of the of the yellow. Without looking too saturated. Yeah, without looking too saturated. Surprising, isn't it? Plus 45, mm. and yet that looks very much, well, very close, I would say, to what I remember. Okay, uh, one thing I would be quite interested in doing is seeing if I can use the HSL to lighten the greens. So I'm going to go to luminance and crosshairs again. I'm going to look at the Hawthorne up here and click and drag upwards and that you can just see it lightening but it is actually affecting the other colours again now one of the byproducts of lightening is it desaturates yes so it's actually done something good and something not so good so we might have to adjust the saturation again yeah we would or we simply halve the amount so we're going to come back down and I quite like that lightening on the yellow so long as there's not too much of it and what I'm going to do now is manually tune this. So to lighten the greens, maybe drop the yellows back a little bit. And that will subtly affect those colours in a different way. Another colour that I'm interested in in this picture 
is the heather on the hillside in the distance. Can you see that? Yes, when you zoom in, you can see the can very see obvious it. purples. I'd like to just try lightening the purples a bit. It's probably a magenta feel, I would imagine. There it goes, magenta and purple. Lighten that a bit and maybe just a bit of saturation, not too much. It doesn't need to be over-egged, I don't think. But by lightening, I'm probably desaturating a bit. That is more what I remember. So, click back again. That just helps Standing. to emphasize them in a yes. very subtle way. One further thought is how would it be if we took the same picker, went to luminance and tried to darken the greys which are mostly blue, actually affecting the purples as well, that's quite interesting. Just darken the blues down a bit. And because darkening can increase saturation, we're also just going to desaturate that a little as well. So it still looks grey rather than a re really blue colour. Now I think the yellows could take a little bit more saturation. And now I'm just fine tuning these to taste. So I've, I've used the picker to, as it were, identify my primary fields of interest and I'm probably reasonably happy with that. By the way, I won't go on too much longer, but just I often find it helpful, uh, as well as the upside down trick I often do, just to reduce the size of the image. Sometimes for viewing, that's an A7R, it's quite a big image. As this so you can see the more of the tonal variations rather than the fine detail. Yeah, it's sort of as if were you're looking at the overall design, the, f the, the main shapes, and also I think sometimes the, the dominant colours. So we're looking at the image small, if we do backslash, we can see it as it, oh, it, it, you know what it's done, it's gone back to a previously adjusted position, so that's, that's not right. What we really want is to be able to go back to the original, so... We could use the history slider. We could, so that goes all the way back to here. I think we go back oh, to the reset, reset settings, settings where we, where we initially yeah. knocked all back. Yeah, and that shows us that rather warm version that we had. Rather warm and a bit flat. And actually, I think it shows me we've got much better colour balance, but overall we could probably take a little bit more ambient saturation. So now that we're reasonably happy with the overall balance, I'm going to push the saturation up a bit. So these first phases with the use saturation and lightness tool were to get the relationships between saturation and colours correct and now you can make global changes. Yes, I mean you use the word correct, I, I, I can accept that but I think yeah. um, other people correct might say... Correct for you. Correct, exactly, yes, it's, it is in a way more about interpretation. Just to uh, reverse that, when we should just make the point, if you're using this little series of numbers beside the navigator that if you then go back to uh, the image, you click once, it will go to the previously selected highlighted number, press again, it will go back to fit. Yes. So that, um, that's quite a good way, of, a good thing to know. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's looking very lively when you look at it like that. That's because I've put the saturation up to plus 10. Uh, but if we then get rid of the surroundings, and just go to back to a smaller setting such as 1 to 16 or maybe 1 to 8 and get rid of our sidebar. Yes. That's probably an appropriate way yes. to view the image. You know, I think when you look at it like that, it looks fine. The, the, on the white background especially, it seems to but reduce the effects of saturation. On a black background, things look quite saturated. They do. On a yeah. white. I'm sure we can confirm that very quickly by going control click black. Yeah. White, by the way, I think is the ultimate uh, background uh, to inspect the image on because you're comparing it with the white of paper, yes. as it were, and that's the, uh, the white of the monitor, um, but it's really in reference to that white that we need to make our final judgments on.
Okay, do you want to have a go? Yes, well I had uh, a couple of samples I've chosen for different reasons and this first sample is a, a shot taken on a Sony A900 from some time ago um, and the first thing I wanted to do here was to show how I, let me just reset those for a moment, how I sometimes use the hue sliders to adjust and separate colour. Now, it's the classic summary shot. We've got lots of green in there and the relationships between the greens are all fairly close. Yep. Uh, and so what I wanted to do was to go down to hue, saturation and lightness, go to the hue tool and I'm going to take the yellows and the greens and move them in opposite directions. And I'm going to do it quite a lot to try and demonstrate what's going on here. So I'm taking the yellows yep. and making them go towards warmer yeah. colours, towards red. Orange, red, yeah. I'm going to take the greens and take the greens and make them towards blue. Uh, now I've got to change the global temperature a little bit. But at some point you will see that some areas, especially these uh, mosses, yes. are now going very yellow. And then the grasses in the background are very, very blue. Now there's lots of separation, but it looks a bit, a bit alien, yeah. let's say, at this point in time. So I can now roll these back especially the blue grasses. So if I take them back to about there, starts to look more realistic, and take the yellows down a little bit. Now hopefully you can see that we've now got separation between the, the grasses and the straw-coloured um, dry grasses and the, and the moss. Yes. Now I've gone slightly overboard here just to make a point, but often it's quite nice to be able to do that, especially when an image that's got so much green in it. Um, another example of where I've used the HSL sliders is trying to create separations in an image like this, where I want to apply saturation separately to two different areas. Would you see this also as a way of balancing colour using yes. this, this tactic? Yes. Um, and, and our memory for colour, I think, changes as well. Um, I'm, in, in this case, uh, I may warm that up slightly, but if I, if I warm it up to try and make the reds look um, vibrant, as I remember them, mm. I've lost any intensity in the, in the greens of the, of the leaves. So yes. take it down so the greens look okay, then I can address these two colours separately. So let's, let me just start choosing the picker and bring the reds up a little bit. Using saturation. Using saturation. Yeah. Um, the same thing with the greens. I may now be able to Tweak the do hue. the same thing with a hue. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see what happens. This doesn't always work, but if you want to just add a, a hint towards red rather than the orangey yellows, and then I would say slightly towards blue. So it's it's this is about separating again at the. The picker, again, like we saw earlier, is a broad tool. If you wanted to adjust things more accurately, I would use the sliders. Now, hopefully that separates those two colours away from each other. Um, and if we go back to, in our history, uh, to here, we can see that there's a subtle variation in colour. We've gone from a, yes. an orangey wall to more of an orangey brick coloured wall and the greens likewise have gone slightly richer and I may take one of the adjustments I quite often make with greens is to darken them slightly um, okay. this is where I'm going to try and identify which slide if I go the whole way you can see yes that. it's interesting isn't it yeah, yeah. so yeah. often darken greens to try and differentiate things yeah slightly I think I have to say that I, I don't think that's very effective but I think the balance is is a big part of this as well uh, and for me, balance is essentially a cool, warm thing. Yes. Um, and there's there's no doubt that the brain does an awful lot of that, all of it, in fact, automatically, doesn't it, when we're out outdoors, even at times of you know immense warmth, like uh, perhaps a, a vibrant sunset or something. There's a lot of cool tones in there, and it's yes. it's, it's constantly interpreting the scene that way. So I think that's a a, a very important part of our. You know, our responsibility doing colour uh, to 
I said responsibilities. I think it, it, it's obviously a responsibility to us, but also to the, the work itself. If, if it looks uh, unbalanced because it's far too warm or far too cold, mostly it doesn't work. I mean, there are exceptions, hmm. and there's no reason that you can't uh, tweak it towards cool or warm according to the interpretation that you're applying to the image. But at the same time, I think as a general rule, balance is a it's a big part of composition as well, but especially it's important in colour. And uh, I think by separating them in that way, you're creating a, 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 an image that has a wider, has a greater feeling of depth to it. Yes, and, and I think we've all probably seen it when we've gone out to, and had an amazing sunset and it's been full of rich orange red light. And we come back and look at the pictures and we can't make it look correct because by the time we've got the colour in there, it just looks, it looks too orange. And we wind the oranges down yeah. And then it doesn't look anywhere near what we remember it as. And it's what we remember, it's the relationships. If we can get the rich oranges and cool colours elsewhere in the picture, it looks all the richer for it, I think. One of the, one of the things that, uh, just briefly, uh, I wanted to say was that when you, you think about, about colour and post-production generally, I, I see there being four different considerations. The base one is, what did you see? The, the second is, what do you remember? The third is how do you interpret? And the fourth is what does the picture need? And all of those are significant, but actually there's like a hierarchy. Yes. So at the top, the what does the picture need is the trump card. That's the thing that ultimately determines whether the picture really lives on the page. Uh, and you have to tune yourself into that. But it, it's fundamentally built around you know, the facts of what you saw and your memory of what you saw, which aren't necessarily the same thing. Yes. And I think we have another example from yourselves, from a... Was this Crackington Haven? Yeah, yeah, there's two there. Which would you like to look at? Shall we start with this one? Sure. And um, this is a, a... Well, this is from a rock fall, a fairly fresh, very fresh fall. You can see it looks rather milky, and I think the reason for that is that it, it's... Uh, it's a little bit overexposed, although technically it's not, because if you look at the histogram, it looks fine. But it doesn't look like what I remember. Yes. It looks both brighter and flatter. Uh, so there's a contrast issue that has to be addressed. Uh, and maybe a simple contrast increase will help to restore the colour to some extent. But I'm still, before I do that, I'm going to go to my odd trick and, whoa. That gives you that's an idea. Orange. That's uh, pretty horrible. Uh, we'll try it also again. I think what I'm doing here, by the way, is just a slightly cruder version of what you showed, uh, to an extent, using without using HSL, yes. just you know the ambient saturation, as it were. You can see that the temperature has dropped a lot there. If I go take that saturation out again, uh, we've got something that's cooler. And I have to say that this is uh, probably that that sort of degree of um, of saturation obviously it is far too low uh, but the overall colour is looking quite good now I could definitely use HSL there's always several different ways of doing everything and the first thing I would do probably is use luminance and try to target these greys here and push them down So that's adding contrast in, but doing it through yes. through targeting a single yeah. colour. And I'm not sure that's the right thing to do, so bear with me a second. And instead of that, what we'll do is take the tone curve, which uh, is not something we've looked at before, but I'd just like to see if it'll work here. It's partly because I, I know that with a tone curve I can tweak contrast in the areas of the curve that I particularly want to. Now this could end up being exactly what you would do with a contrast increase. But because it's a relatively, I should have mentioned, it's a relatively old lens shot on the Phase 1, but with a Hasselblad 120mm from about 1985. So there's been old lens coatings, probably. It's yeah. like softer, softer. Softer coatings, and you know, maybe there's a little bit of age as well, might be a bit of blooming in the lens. Uh, so it's still a very sharp lens, by the way. I think we can see that if we go in there. Definitely uh, acceptable. There's plenty of fine detail. You yes. could push that up a bit with, uh, you know, with, uh, with, the, uh, with sharpening as well. Um, what I'm doing here is just preserving 
the level of the highlights and just darkening the shadows. Turn the mid-tones a little bit as well. That's probably a bit too much. Bring the shadows back up a bit. And hopefully in the end we'll get something that looks about right. As it's closer to my memory. If anything, I'd say it's probably a little bit blue. Yeah, bluey green maybe. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to push it up a bit, but not much. That's probably a bit too much. And yes, I agree, it looks a little bit green, but not much. So maybe yes. there. And, and that's better. And actually, as a matter of interest, uh, I know we, we try to, with these videos, try to emphasize one particular tool, but inevitably, because we find everything's connected to everything else, we also include snippets of other adjustments like the uh, effects vignetting, which greatly helps the image here uh, because the energy flow in the center is what I'm primarily interested in. And It's interesting that that vignette made it look like there was more contrast without did, changing it? the center of the picture. It did, yeah, just by darkening down the corners. Uh, and I think it does so in a way that's quite believable. I don't think there's... Uh, that's that obvious. I haven't used a great deal, by the way, just uh, a single figure sum, but that's enough to make a significant difference. So you can actually think of the vignetting tool as a form of focused exposure tool, mm. which just happens to uh, work on the edges. So check the histogram. It's still good. And one more uh, adjustment that could well help here is to move the highlights down. And this is global. So just going to take them down, and then I'm going to move the white point up. Now this is very interesting. You were showing me this yeah. earlier today. You see um, what it does? Um, yeah, clear. that's making a big difference. And I think the way I interpret that is that bringing the highlights down levels off the highlights, so you don't get any prominent highlights throughout the picture, mm -hmm. which means that when you increase the whites, it does so across the whole picture without blowing them out. Exactly. So we shouldn't have any clipped whites. Uh, and, uh, and we've already got it selected for the clipping as well. So I can see just a couple of little tones in there. So if I make this sort of plus 29 yeah. or so, I think I, I, I should do a, it. a couple of clipped areas don't don't, don't matter necessarily much, do matter. They? And the other thing is that the clipping doesn't necessarily. Let's just investigate that a second. Let's see them in there. Doesn't always mean that all of the colours are blown. It may just be one channel. I've got uh, a lab type language up there for RGB so it's up to no. 100 yeah. but you can see that it's getting close 99% so, so the blue is 100% tone, yeah. yeah clipping but there's still a little bit of tone in there anyway if we turn that off we can see the yeah it the doesn't very, look wrong does it no that looks fine yeah I think it's I think it's pretty close there um, now just briefly before we finish one could if you felt that the overall balance was correct, but you wanted to just, maybe this looks a little bit cyan up in here. Yes. Might be worth just seeing if we can fix that in HSL by taking saturation and trying to target that cyan. Just desaturate it slightly. There, just like that. Yeah. Just a little bit. It's looking more slaty now. And we could indeed have done that with hue as well. So. Uh, there are other tools, uh, of course, and in the basic module, such as Clarity, which with rock textures can sometimes be helpful. See, just a little bit there. Actually, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Um, maybe 25 or so uh, doesn't do any harm. Uh, just backslash will take us back to the beginning. And that's where we've got to. And we can, if we like, use the um, radial filters to apply adjustments to colour as well. So if we wanted to, we could take that area in the top right, remember to reset the effect, which I always yep. forget to, and then put some a little bit of magenta in yep. and warmth in to cancel out that yep. um, Absolutely. effect there, which gives us um, a slightly more natural look. A neutral, but just localised in one area rather than throughout. Mm. Uh, and as you were saying earlier, we can then, if we, if we found another area, we thought needed a bit of that, we can brush it in. So, yeah. The second, would you like to take another look at the last picture? Very quickly. 
we can see this is this is also from a rock fall uh, this time at Miluk Haven uh, very very recent rock fall so it's amazing the colors that are uh, that are revealed to, in, in these big uh, landslides and um, over time the colors tend to fade and the sea particularly once uh, the sea gets in and around the rocks uh, they tend to bleach out to this rather kind of bluish gray uh, but at the moment there's a tremendous amount of orange in there which is absolutely spectacular however for me the color balance of this image is actually a little bit too warm it's now, not got the radial filter selected thank there. you so i'm going to use a little bit of saturation not quite as much as previously because it's so rich already and again try it auto that should cool things off a lot which it does it's interesting that it i mean the slate would be more neutral but because there's so much yellow in there it's uh it's it's injected blue in it has to balance yeah. the yellow it has and I, I think a little bit of that is okay yeah um but yeah i think that taking well perhaps it's provided a nice contrast between it, it, the, it does the red and exactly blue. exactly here now, if we if we accepted this white balance, which is very cool, then I think it would be essential to draw up the orange in terms of saturation. And actually that now starts to look much more what I remember. I do remember it being cool. It was actually quite a cloudy yes. day, very overcast. Um, but with some areas, and we were also in the shadow of the cliff, so all of all of that combined when there was a bit of blue sky around you've got these blue casts coming in that doesn't look unnatural at all to me but just restoring the you can see the orange and yellow sliders now have quite a bit of saturation put into them and that's much more the presence you know if you think about the language that adobe use which is i think very helpful these uh, this area is called the presence field clarity vibrance saturation and while I generally leave vibrance well alone, clarity is a useful tool and saturation uh, is as well. And it does increase the kind of physicality of these areas when we adjust them with a plus value. Uh, if we want to create a, a more ethereal look, we might go the other way with them. So anyway, that's, I think that's probably enough on, on that. Uh, I might make a couple of other adjustments, by the way, because this kind of picture to me can definitely benefit from a little bit of lens vignetting. Yeah, again, that much. looks like it increases the contrast. It's it a does. nice way of it does. of bringing out, bringing attention to the centre, and yes. it almost looks like it's boosting colour. Yes, yes, quite. So, a couple of different ways of, of looking at the image full screen, aren't there? There's the tab shift there, and there's also the F key on its own as well as lights out the L button. So it's worth just reviewing those different ways of looking at the image. And I think I really always encourage anyone to have a very proactive uh, way of working uh, and reflect from time to time on what you're doing rather than overdoing it. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you.